Let's talk for a little bit about focal therapy of prostate cancer. I'd like to say up front that I view this as a excellent research opportunity now, and I think people who are getting focal therapy should be preferably in a formal clinical trial, but if not, at least in some kind of a structured observational uh, plan so that we can learn from where we are right now, which is very early. It occurred to us <clears throat> fairly early on that this was a natural transition. If we could put a biopsy needle into the, into the tumor in the prostate, retur return to it specifically, characterize it accurately, uh, why not put a laser fiber or something else in that tumor and ablate it? And that's the mission that we've been on for a good while now. I believe that focal therapy of prostate cancer is at the beginning of a mega trend. This book was written uh, in the early 80s, um, uh, and it, uh, mega trend is defined as a long-term change that affects government societies and economies permanently over a long period of time. I do believe we're at the start of a mega trend in focal therapy of prostate cancer. Uh, these are driving forces that include demographic changes, resource limitations, and technological advances. This is a, uh, was a bestseller in 1982. I think it's still very pertinent. We think that there is an opportunity for studying focal therapy in as many as 60,000 men per year. The government released figures some time ago to show that uh, the projection would be that radical prostatectomy and radiation therapy would decline over the years, that active surveillance would grow, and in fact active surveillance right now is the most rapidly growing management strategy for prostate cancer, and that focal therapy would come of age eventually. And these, these projections were made a long time ago, and, and they have come, uh, come true. Uh, the idea of this treatment is to make the punishment fit the crime. That if the, the crime is not bad, uh, why use a sledgehammer to kill the flea? And that's, that's, our, uh, that's our mission. So vocal therapy can be traced very nicely back to the year 2002 and 2008 when a radiologist in Florida, Gary Onick, uh, uh, started using cryotherapy for partial gland ablation, which is now the preferred term. Uh, he, dis he was the first to coin the, word, the term male lumpectomy. Uh, when you explain this to a patient and make that analogy to breast cancer, people get it because breast cancer uh, is now about 50% managed by lumpectomy. A male lumpectomy, he said very presciently, could have a profound effect on prostate cancer management, and I believe these words are going to come to pass. There are these five compelling reasons that I can think of uh, why focal therapy makes sense. Uh, first, we can localize the disease. Okay, it's not perfect, but we can do a much better job than ever before using MRI-guided biopsies or sometimes template biopsies, uh, but, but it's not blind anymore. We, we can see prostate cancer in, in many cases. Uh, Partial gland ablation have been, our, our focal therapy has been very successful in other cancers. Breast is the most best known, but also uh, uh, kidney, uh, also thyroid, and others. So, so you don't need necessarily to remove the whole organ to do the patient some good. Uh, the efficacy of whole gland therapy has been called into question by a number of, of large prospective multinational clinical trials, uh, and and uh, we are not we our uh, our romance with radical prostatectomy while is still there, it's just not what it was in the days of Pat Walsh showing us that we could take out the prostate uh, safely and effectively, and it's still uh, a, a, a very important part of our armamentarium, but it's not everything, and it may not be quite as golden as we once thought it was. This is true for both surgery and radiation therapy. I believe in the index origin of prostate cancer. This is a theory proposed originally and uh, uh, over the years. Hashima Med, who is uh, now professor of urology at the uh, Imperial College in London, is probably the crown prince of this, uh, of this concept and has done more to 
uh, push focal therapy ahead. I'll show you, show you him in just a few minutes. But I do believe that this concept that if you can find the most important tumor, the lar which is almost always the largest and the po most poorly differentiated, and you can take care of that lesion, that you have done the patient good. You may have cured him. Uh, and another reason why focal therapy makes sense at this time is because patients want it. Uh, they want it so much that it's, it's almost a pathetically easy sell to patients. I go through this a lot. The potential for, a, for abuse is there, and that's one of the reasons that organizations like the American Neurological Association are concerned about this getting out there too fast without study because it could be used and, and, and actually is being used somewhat uh, inappropriately in some quarters right now on a commercial basis. So we must be careful to guard against that. This is uh, our group at, at uh, UCLA. This is Professor Ahmed. This is one of the great uh, rags to riches stories uh, in our specialty. Uh, he came to, the United, to, uh, to London from a working class family in Bangladesh and he went straight to Cambridge where he was educated at Cambridge and then uh, worked with Mark Emberton at University College London UCL uh, and now has got his own program at Imperial College in London. Imperial College is like the MIT of England. You will be hearing from this man again in the future. So we can localize prostate cancer. Let me go through those five reasons briefly. This is our MRI. We've had some uh, discussion about this before, but, uh, but we can localize prostate cancer much better than we ever have been able to before by the uh, virtue of MRI-guided biopsies. Uh, the MRI alone is not adequate. The uh, biopsy must be combined with it, and it should be both a templated and a uh, systematic biopsy, the, uh, the uh, template or grid built into the software, which uh, John showed so well, is very important. We think uh, the template, following the template is more important than the freehand biopsies. It gives much better sampling of the prostate. Um, the uh, second reason that focal therapy makes sense is because it's success in other organs. Some of you may remember Bernie Fisher, who's still alive. He was the man who, in the United States, put prostate, uh, put uh, focal therapy for breast cancer on the map. He, uh, this is a 20-year a follow-up in women that he treated with either uh, randomized to have either uh, focal lumpectomy or a radical mastectomy, and out to 20 years, the results are not too much different. Some people make the argument that, well, radiation therapy was used as well, but you can see radiation therapy doesn't make a great deal of difference. So, so removing the entire organ is not always necessary. I mentioned some clinical trials that have showed that the efficacy of radical prostatectomy has been called into question. These are three that have been done uh, over the past oh, six or eight, ten years uh, in uh, uh, different nations. This is from the United Kingdom, uh, Freddie Hamdi at Oxford, uh, Tim Wilt from Minnesota in the United States put this together, and Bill Axelson in Scandinavia, and they have all uh, n none, of, none of them have shown that radical prostatectomy is as completely perfect as we would like it to be in terms of, e of efficacy and uh, preservation of life. But it, it is good. It still has a role. I refer patients for radical prostatectomy all the time, but it's not f for everybody. It's not the only treatment that we've got. The index theory of prostate cancer it, uh, clearly, this is a multifocal disease, but there have been a number of good studies. One of the most interesting is the one from Hopkins a few years ago, showing that it's uh, w usually one parent clone of cancer cells within the prostate are the ones that uh, feed metastatic disease. And if we can take care of those, that we will have done some good. This uh, study was done, a very interesting study uh, uh, called the Warm Autopsy Study. There have only been a couple of these done where men with known prostate cancer who are about to die from the disease give permission uh, for them to have an autopsy immediately after death. And, uh, and a lot has been learned about, about uh, the spread of prostate cancer from those studies. 
the index theory of prostate cancer was confirmed uh, in a nice study from uh, NYU showing that the larger, the largest tumor present in the prostate uh, is almost always the most poorly differentiated. This shows Gleason 7s and more here, the large tumor, Gleason 6 uh, uh, small here. So uh, most uh, index tumors will be large and poorly differentiated and we have to focus on them. And then patient preferences uh, are, are very important. The uh, FDA is now taking into account patient preferences for approval of new, new uh, drugs and devices. These are some studies done uh, uh, from uh, Hashim Ahmed in, in England. Herb Lepore published on uh, laser ablation. Hashim's has been with Haifu and uh, Duke Bond in Los Angeles, in Ventura, California, published on cryotherapy. And the incidence of incontinence uh, and erectile dysfunction is very low with focal therapy com compared to traditional therapies of prostate cancer. Interesting, a study out of Fox Chase a few years ago that we've come across, when men in the prostate cancer age group are forced to make a decision between quality of life and length of life, by about three or four to one, they choose quality of life over length of life. So we have to take these uh, into consideration. The different methods of focal therapy uh, include cryotherapy, which is the oldest form of focal therapy and uh, is still very applicable today. Uh, the uh, people in uh, Colorado have a very big uh, experience with this, one of the largest. We've come across it uh, for hemigland cryoablation. It lends itself to this very well. It's a urological procedure. Uh, HIFU <coughs> was approved by the US FDA in October of 2015, um, and uh, it's uh, probably the most precise of the different treatments. It has been, its application has been limited by training and by the fact that they proposed a cash model for this. You may be aware it was being done offshore um, for $25,000 a pop. Uh, now it's uh, a Medicare code has actually been issued for the facility fee uh, within the past year. I do expect this to in increase in utilization. Uh, laser prostatectomy, a focal laser ablation, uh, can be formed by a radiologist, by a urologist, and I uh, disclose that I am a co-founder of a company interested in, uh, f in forwarding this because it offers a, a very uh, a convenient way of doing this by the urologist in an office setting. <clears throat> Uh, we are actively doing cryotherapy hemigland ablation. This is a, a little uh, sequence of it. The cryoprobes are placed on this side of the prostate. Uh, this is a man with a fairly small prostate. You can see the, uh, the ice ball as it starts moving down. The uh, anterior uh, is activated first and then the posterior. And uh, we monitor this with a uh, thermal probe placed right here against the rectum. When we began doing this, we put probes all over the place, but now we just want to be sure we don't injure the rectal wall. And, uh, and the uh, central part of this ice ball gets to 40 below zero centigrade and uh, is so-called lethal ice. The urethra is protected in the midline here by a warming catheter uh, that's left in during the procedure. And, uh, and this is a very safe and effective way. We have uh, looked at our data recently. During the year 2017, we did 29 of these hemigland cryoablations. Um, this picture was shown previously on the, the way we localize these lesions. Let's see, can I go back on that? Let's see, nope, I guess I can't go back. Can the uh, can the project can the projection is taken? Ah, well, the, there, there we go. This is. Uh, I wanted to point out how we're doing our biopsies in uh, terms of selecting these patients and following them. Uh, this is an example of a uh, man with a visible lesion in the prostate on ultrasound fused in here uh, and the biopsies are taken selectively from this and also from 
the rest of that lobe and from the other side of the prostate. But in follow-up, at six-month follow-up, we go back to the same area by tracking those, those targeted biopsies. We go back to the same area and sample that area again. Uh, Six-month biopsy, we want to be sure that we accomplished our goal, but we are also looking at long-term follow-up biopsies, 12, 18, 24, et cetera, and we'll be doing both sides of the prostate at that time. Uh, it's interesting, even with a hemigland ablation, PSAs fall, prostate volume uh, falls very often. And um, our six-month biopsy results in a small series of patients, when they were, bi when they were re biopsied using this very uh, extensive follow-up method, no cancer was found in 23 of them. Three had microfoci and three had or were considered failures. But um, we think this has a real opportunity, and cryoablation is fairly easy to learn and to begin uh, at, uh, at your place. There, uh, there is a, uh, a large, uh, the other method I want to talk about briefly is uh, HIFU, high intensity focused ultrasound, multi-center British registry. This was just expanded to about 1,000 uh, men, but um, uh, at 56 months of median follow-up, there were only two fistulae and no incontinence, uh, and 98% of the men were failure free at uh, 56 months of follow-up. The um, <clears throat> biopsy was not done in all of these patients, but in the ones that it was but done, biopsies uh, were negative in 191 of, uh, of their patients. So, so HIFU is a good, a good um, modality for focal therapy. The, uh, th this is, uh, these are a few outtakes from a uh, video that we're going to show at the AUA this year. Uh, we're, we're using these tracked biopsy site locations to try to plan focal therapy. We're using a three, software called 3D Slicer. It's uh, freely available. Uh, this is the urethra. This is what the MRI sees in green. Uh, and uh, this is a projected, the yellow is a projected uh, treatment margin that encompasses all positive spots. The positive biopsies are in orange, the uh, negative ones in blue. This uh, is put onto a disc and fed into the side of the, uh, of the uh, sonoblate machine, which we're using for HIFU, and we can actually very precisely plan focal therapy. One, one concern here is that when your treatment is the si gives you a, a treatment spot the size of a grain of rice, there is a temptation to be a little too focused. And so with the, the, the pendulum may be sling, swinging a little bit too forward uh, on this, but, um, uh, but, but at least it does give you a better idea using this planning software about, uh, about how to do this. So we would, we, we would rather over-treat than under treat, so we're 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 doing that. I uh, in speaking with Professor Ahmed in London last week, there was a, a what he called a master class in focal therapy uh, over there. Uh, he told me that he doesn't want to do anything less than a quarter gland depletion at this point. The uh, issues ahead for focal therapy, as I see them, uh, we have to. Uh, it's interesting how this has grown. There are about uh, 2,400 references on PubMed. We looked this up recently on focal therapy. 168 trials lim uh, registered in the government's website for clinical trials. So this is a very active area of clinical research right now. The, the uh, concerns include the treatment margins, how, how wide we've got to go. This is uh, uh, it was shown in a, a little earlier. The MRI is not perfect. The MRI shows us where to target, where we've got the highest likelihood of getting a positive hit, but it's, it ca can only be used in conjunction with these tracked biopsy site locations if we're going to do the patient the most good in terms of planning the treatment. Long-term efficacy is not known. Potential for abuse, I, I mentioned that. So, uh, this has, uh, is it, the evolution of focal therapy for prostate cancer is very interesting and it is tracking in a way the lumpectomy story for breast cancer tracked. Uh, Bernie Fisher was vilified uh, when he started doing this in the early 70s. People said lumpectomy is murder. This is equivalent to malpractice. The Halsteadian radical mastectomy is the only thing that can be done. 
but things evolved in breast cancer treatment as well. This is a story that I thought was very interesting. This is about a lawsuit in New York by a uh, well-known actress and model who underwent a radical mastectomy uh, and she sued her surgeon, although she was cured. She lost her job, she couldn't work anymore, and she sued her surgeon because he never told her that lumpectomy was a potential uh, option. And uh, she collected a couple million bucks in a, lo in a lawsuit in 1999. So we've gone full tilt to where it was murder back then, to where it's malpractice now not to talk about it. So we've got to talk to our patients and let them have some, uh, some options on this. I think that the takeaway message is at this point for focal therapy is that it's best applied to somebody with uh, intermediate risk prostate cancer. We don't want to do it for minimal disease. We don't want to do it for terrible disease. Uh, for Gleason 7 disease, I think it's an option if it's localized to one part of the prostate and the prostate is small enough to where our current therapies uh, can handle this, primarily HIFU and, uh, and so to an extent laser uh, ablation by radiologists or cryotherapy. Uh, they must be followed as though they are in active surveillance. Uh, some people call focal therapy super surveillance. Uh, but but you can't, it's not a one and done situation for sure. And uh, our studies in our own patient population indicate that as many as 40% of newly diagnosed prostate cancer patients are reasonable candidates for focal therapy. Thank you very much.